friends. Welcome to this week's Kids Church at Home. I hope that you've been having a good week with all that snow around. And maybe you've found an opportunity to build a snow person or a snow angel or some kind of snow animal, maybe. What kind of things have you been able to do out in all this beautiful snow that we've gotten? Our special shout out this week goes to Keith and to Haley. I hope especially that you are having fun outside this week. Speaking of building snow people and snow angels and snow animals, our theme this week is about being the body of Christ, the body of the church, and how all of our different parts fit together. So let's get into exploring our bodies and what it means to be the body of the church. So from the very beginning, people have been wondering, what does it mean to live as community and a community that works for God and shares God's love? And for centuries, people have been sharing lessons and ideas about how we can do that best. A long, long time ago, one of the early people who shared wisdom and lessons on this was a man named Paul. And he wrote a letter to a town called Corinth. And they were struggling with how do we all fit together in community? And his advice was this. He said, we are all the body of Christ. Each one of us is a different part of the body. And just as a body doesn't work if there are two right hands or two left hands, or just as a body doesn't work if it's all feet, everybody needs different parts, just like a community needs different parts. So Paul's invitation to communities was to consider how not only did we all play a different part in the community, but how we might celebrate the different things that different people can do instead of being jealous of what others can do, how can we celebrate that and then discover what we ourselves can do? That's a really good question. I wonder, what do you celebrate in your friends? And what are the things that you offer to your friends that they don't have? Let's wonder a little bit more about the body too. How many parts of the body can you name? And what kind of jobs do they do? We can name our nose that smells, our ears that hear, our hands that can pick things up or write or communicate with sign language. There's our neck that helps us to look in different directions. There's our feet that help us walk and dance. I wonder, as you think about all these body parts that you have, are there any that you don't need? I wonder, have you ever experienced having part of your body that wasn't working the way that you wanted it to? And how did the rest of your body respond to that? How did you find other ways to live and be in the world, even if part of your body wasn't working the way you expected it to? We celebrate all these different parts of the body, but we also know that all of the parts of the body are there to support each other. And when part of it isn't working properly or part of it is injured, the other parts are there to lift up and fill in the gaps. And that's part of community as well. Now, I wonder, are there any parts of your body that you can't see and what do they do? Let's think about our brain. We can't see it, but we know that it thinks for us and it feels for us. What about our stomach? I can't see my stomach, but I know it's there and it does an important job. How does that work in community? Are there people in our community that do important things that sometimes we don't see? Can you think about anybody who does stuff that's really important to how our community works and comes together and does God's work, but we don't see them do it? 
So as you can see, Paul's lesson about community being like a body is so wise, isn't it? Because as people, we all have different gifts. We all share different gifts. When some of us are unable to share the gifts that we have, others are there to step in and help. And some of us share gifts that nobody sees. So I want to invite you to think about what are some of the things you bring your community and your family? What are some of the things that your family members do to make the community better and make your home better? What are some of the things that happen in your home that go unseen or nobody says thank you for, but they're really important? And what are some other and new ways that we might be able to show we are part of God's community? What are the gifts you think God has given you to share with others, to help build a community that works together like a body with different parts, with different roles, different gifts, all of which are important. And make the body the way that it is and make the community the way that it is. Well, my friends, for our mindful moment today, I want to invite you to come and do a body scan with me. This is a way for us to become aware of our whole body and where it feels good and where maybe it feels sore or tense. And then we can use a breath to invite God's peace and grace into those parts of our body and invite some relaxation and some healing into those spots. So come and join me. Hopefully you can join me on the floor. I'm going to lie down. You can also do this sitting up in a chair, but lying down is a nice way to make sure all of our muscles can get relaxed. So starting on the floor on our back, you're going to relax your feet and let them turn out and lay your hands with the palms up towards the ceiling beside your body. And now we're gonna take a deep breath in so we can feel our tummy rise up to the ceiling. Let's breathe together in and out. Our tummy is going to drop down to the floor. Let's do that again. In and out. And one last big breath. Tall to the ceiling and all the way to the floor. The next time we breathe in, let's use our breath to bring awareness down to our toes. Let's breathe in and imagine that breath goes all the way down to our toes. And maybe wiggle your toes for a minute. And as you breathe out, relax your toes. Let them go still. A little more wiggle. This time, when we breathe in, we're going to feel our knees tense up. We're going to bring all the muscles into our knees as we breathe in. Make our knees nice and stiff. And then as we breathe out, you're going to relax all the muscles in your legs. Maybe a gentle shake and then relax your whole leg. Relax your knees. Relax your ankles all the way back to your toes. That's good. Now let's try our fingers. We're going to breathe in and we're going to clench our fists. So breathe in, clench. And breathe out. We're going to relax our fingers, maybe wiggle them a little bit, and then just let them fall to the floor. Let's do the same with our shoulders. Breathe in. We're going to tense up our shoulders. Maybe they come to our ears a little bit. And then as we breathe out, relax the shoulders. See if they can melt into the floor as though they're so heavy. Heavy, heavy, heavy shoulders. 
Let's try our tummy and our chest. As we breathe in, feel all those muscles in your breath that raise your tummy, that raise your chest. And then as you breathe out, you're going to feel all that weight sink into the floor. Maybe you feel like a big, heavy blob of jello, all relaxed. This time as you're breathing in, let's bring our attention to our forehead. Can you feel the muscles in your forehead, around your eyes, around your cheeks? And as you breathe out, let's see if you can smooth out your face. Can you relax your eyes? Can you relax your cheeks and your mouth? Let's take just a couple of normal breaths here. Just breathe in normally. And as you breathe out each time, pay attention to sinking into the floor, being heavy, being completely relaxed and still. Let's breathe three more times here. Each time we breathe out, we become a little bit heavier. One more breath. out and may God's peace be in every single part of your body. You might want to stay here a little longer until you're ready and then you can turn on your side and push yourself up and you can get ready to move on to the next activity. So for our craft today, what better way to celebrate the body than to do some finger painting? So that's what we're going to do today. For that, you will need a piece of eight and a half by 11 paper or any kind of paper that you can find. If you have scrap paper, that's a really good way to use up some scrap paper. We'll also need some paint. I've chosen five different colors. I want to invite you to choose at least three different colors, if not more. And then, of course, we need our fingers. Now, if you are really uncomfortable with finger painting because it doesn't feel good on your fingers, you could also use Q-tips for this activity. The idea is that we're going to make a lot of different colored dots on our painting. Remembering that as we bring in all those different color of dots, the dots together are what make the painting. Each dot on its own doesn't mean very much, but as we bring the different colored dots in and add them, that's what makes our painting. So let's get creative together. Our first task is to cut our piece of paper out into a shape that reminds us of the church in some way. You can make any shape that you want. Maybe it's a house. Maybe it's a tree. Maybe it's a heart. The shape that I chose is to do a cross. I'm going to lay my cross on another piece of paper because I know it gets messy and I don't want to add any more paint to my table today. So I'm just going to lay that on another piece of paper, a scrap piece underneath, and that way, if my fingerprints go off the edges, they'll just go on to the scrap paper underneath. Now, all we do is we take our fingers and we take our paint and we're going to take a finger, dip it in one of the colors of paint, and then start adding some dots onto our shape. You can add your dots in a pattern. You could add them randomly. You could try and create other shapes with your dots. 
Be careful when you switch colors to make sure that you use either a different finger or that you wipe your finger clean so that each dot and each color stays clean. Otherwise, we can get some brown looking colors. So that's all there is to it. I invite you to get your fingers dirty and all colorful and fill in until the whole shape is covered in all kinds of colorful dots. Well, my shape is all filled in with dots. So many different colors. Each one of them is kind of plain to start, but look as we add them all together. As I was putting my dots on, I was imagining that this was like a nighttime sky and that this was trees and flowers and the trees and flowers were growing up into the nighttime sky with the stars and beautiful purple colors. I wonder what were you imagining and thinking about when you were putting your dots on? Were you thinking about a pattern for your dots? Were you looking at how the colors fit together? Maybe you tried creating stripes or maybe you put your colors in different areas. There are so many ways to fill our shape with these dots. Maybe if you do another one, it'll look completely different. Well, my friend, here is my final cross, all filled in with different colored dots. When we look close, each dot has its own color, its own shape, it's all distinct. When we look at it from far away, they all start to blend in. And if those, any of those dots were missing, that would leave a big blank spot. But when they're all together like that, they fill in the shape, don't they? That's so neat. And it's a lot like our communities and God's communities. When we look really close at each individual, we're all different, we're all special, we all have our own shape and our own purpose. When we look at the community from far away, we see how all of those individual dots work together to create something that is bigger than them. I hope you had a lot of fun with your finger painting today. Sometimes it's fun to get so close to the art and the craft, you've got your fingers right in it. And I hope too, that using your fingers and your own unique fingerprints to fill in this shape reminds you of the gift and the uniqueness that you are, but how that uniqueness is made even bigger and more important when it's put together with all of the uniquenesses of your friends and family and community around you. Let's take those gifts that we have, my friends, and bless them and bless each other so that we can grow stronger together as a community. May there be love in your heart to give. May there be joy in your heart to share. And may there be strength in your heart to lift others up. See ya. Mm -hmm.